Welcome to part two of working with the console in Studio One Four. And to begin, I'd like to start off with a couple of things that I missed in part one that really should have been covered in that section. So to start, when we were looking at the small mode, the different modes for viewing the console, as it is, we can work with our inserts and sends at the very top. And we've already taken a look at that and we can click on the plus button to add different effects to our channels. But if we are working in the small mode by clicking this button here, I just wanted to mention that we now have these buttons within the channels that we can click to open up a side panel where we can then access the inserts and sends here. So just make note of that, that we're going to have these available when we're in small mode. And if I return back to the large mode, we see that these are up above and then that button has now uh, disappeared or is no longer available because we can access the inserts and sends up here. And then also if we activate the narrow mode, we can see that our meters are above at the top of our channels. And if we change this to small, just note that those are now going to be placed besides our faders. So just a couple of things to be aware of. And I also want to come back to the inputs panel. If we go ahead and show the meters for the hardware inputs on our audio interface, we can see the levels that are going on here. I forgot to mention up at the top, we can put effects on these inputs, but just be aware that these will be printed to the audio that you are recording. You will not be able to remove those, but if you are someone who likes to use a bit of compression or EQ as you're recording and you want it printed to your audio, you do have the option by opening up the inputs panel, clicking on the plus button, uh, choosing the effects, whether it's personas or a third party. Uh, we also have the triangle here that we can click and access presets that are already put together for us. So if we're working with a vocal, we can uh, choose say a female pop, and then that will place these on our hardware input. And just remember that these will be printed to the audio. So I will remove all and let's close out that input panel. And the last thing that I did not cover was this external panel here. And if I click on that, we can see the different controllers that are connected to studio one. So I've set up the QWERTY keyboard so I can use that to trigger uh, record MIDI. I also have an impact LX plus, so we can click on the triangle for these and we can edit and make adjustments to the, uh, setup for the knobs and faders on our controller. We can also access the setup for the device. And what else do we have here? We can reset it or we can remove it. And I'll go ahead and hide that external. And actually I'm going to hide the instrument panel here as well, because we're not going to be working with that in part two. In part one, we also saw that if by clicking on the triangle here, we can add a bus effects or VCA channel from here, but just know that we can click in an empty area of the console and add it from here. We can also just click on a channel and add them from here. So you've got a few different options for adding these different channels to the console. And if you notice in the center here, we have add bus for selected channels, add VCA for selected channels. So if I were to, let's come to the vocals, I'll select the first one and hold shift and select vocal four. We've got our vocals. So I can then right click and add bus for selected channels. And that's automatically going to route all of our vocal channels. You can see they're now heading to bus one and that's here. And as we saw up above, we have these dashes indicating what channels or how many channels are being sent here. And we can click on that and then see we've got vocal one through four uh, that we sent to this bus in one easy step versus creating the bus and then uh, coming to the output and then selecting it for each individual channel. So it's just a quicker way to set up buses. I'm going to right click and remove that. And let's come back to our menu here by right clicking and you notice here we have the ability to group tracks so let's select these again i'll hold shift and select those four vocals let's group these and then when we group any adjustments that we make to the fader solo mute 
record and monitor for one, then all other channels in the group will be affected. So if I go ahead and adjust the fader, we can see that all the other ones follow along. If I solo, mute, record, monitor, and so on, you get the idea here. Now, if we would like to temporarily disable that function, the group function for a channel, say we'd want to adjust this fader individually or discreetly, we can hold down Alt and then make that adjustment there. I can release Alt and then now we're back to our group function and it's going to adjust those faders relative to one another. I'll control click. If we'd like to the, dissolve the group, we can just right click and dissolve that group. We also have shortcuts here, control plus G to create the group, control plus shift and G to dissolve. I'll just click to dissolve those. And I'm going to just control click to take these faders back to zero DB. And I didn't mention that while the channels are in the group, panning will not be, uh, if I adjust the panning for one channel, it's not going to affect the other ones because typically we will want to adjust the panning discreetly for these channels. So that's one parameter that will not, uh, if we adjust one, it won't affect the other ones when they're in a group. And to finish off in the contextual menu here, we have a couple other things. We can hide a channel like so, and that's going to tie in with our channel list here. You can see that that is now hidden. And we saw in part one that we can use these circles to hide the channels, but we can also right click and hide them from here as well. And then we have edit note and we can add notes to our channel. So if I go ahead and click on that, I'll just put in test notes and then we can, we're putting that into the vocal two channel. I'll click on the channel or close this out. Now, in order to access that, we can right click again and choose to edit that note. Or we have the option in the console options here by clicking on the wrench to show channel notes. And then once I select that, we can see our note is listed down below here. And if we'd like to leave the notes open or visible at the, at the bottom uh, by doing so in the menu, we can always just double click and add more notes here. So I'm going to highlight that and this one, remove those out, come back to the options and let's just hide those notes for now. And while we have the options menu open, let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the other features here. We have grouping as the top section and we have keep effects channels to the right, keep bus channels to the right, VCA channels and so on. So as long as these are engaged, whenever we create a bus or VCA, it's always going to be at the right of our mixer. So again, if we group our vocals and then say we'd like to add a VCA channel for those, that is placed to the right of our mixer. I'll right click and remove that, come back to the options menu, and then let's uh, deselect VCA channels to the right and create that again. And we can see now that's gonna to be to the right of the channels that we have selected. I'll right click and remove that. Let's come back to our options. So basically that is going to function the same for all three of these. And then finally for grouping, we have preserve order of channels with folder track. Now this is going to be useful in an instance where say we would like to keep our bus channels to the right for the bulk of the routing that we're doing within the console, but I'll F3 to close out the console. I do have these drums, drums one through four are actually in this folder. So I can collapse that and they're all contained within this folder track. I'll expand that back out. So what if we would like to add these to a bus, but keep that bus next to these within the console. And this specifically applies to if we add the bus from here. So right now it's not routed to a bus or VCA through this folder track, but if I add a bus channel and F3 to come back to the console, we can see this is our bus that's been created and it is to the right. 
we can see that it's a bus because of the icon here, and we have the four dashes indicating the four vocal channels. And when I click on the wrench icon, you know, it's set to have these to the right. But if we would like to have that bus channel grouped next to these vocals because they're in that folder, we can just click the preserve order of channels with folder track. And we can see now that bus channel is placed next to our vocals. I'll go ahead and deselect that. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that bus out. And what else do we have? Oh, that's the wrong button. Visibility, link show hide of track list and console. So this is on by default and the track list is actually here. So if I click on that, let's close out the console for now. This is gonna provide an overview of all of the tracks that are within your song. And we can show or hide these tracks. You can see that those are going away within our arrange view. And basically when we hide them here, they will be hidden the channels will be hidden within our console as well. And then as I add these back, you can see that these return to the console. And so simply if we were to deselect that, then as we had hide the tracks, the channels will still remain within the console. So that's what that's for. Let's go ahead and hide that track list. We then have link expand collapse of folder tracks with show hide. So if we select that, and I'm going to, let's, I'm actually gonna come into the small mode here and navigate down to our folder track, which is here. This is the one that contains our drums one through four. If I collapse that folder, then we can see our drum tracks disappear from the console. And if I open that folder back up, our tracks are shown in the arrange view and they return to our console. So that is what that setting is for. We then have colorized channel strips. So as we saw in part one, we can click once to access the color palette and change the ch channel color like so. But if we'd like for this to be more visible or more in your face uh, for the color change, we can choose to colorize the channel strip. Then we can see it's gonna be much more apparent as to what these are. So if you like to group your drums, say in red, your vocals in purple, your bass in orange and so on, it's gonna make it more uh, visual and you can find the channels that you are uh, working with when you're working on your mix. I'll go ahead and deselect that. We have show input output connections. So these are here where we can choose our inputs and outs at the very top of our channel. If we would like, we can hide that. So that's what that's for. Show VCA connections. So let's um, right click and add a VCA channel. And now that we have that created, we have the rectangular boxes and we can then click on any channel and direct that to the VCA one. If we had multiple VCAs, then this is gonna be really useful because then you can choose from any of those um, discreetly for each channel. But if you'd prefer not to have these show up, we can always choose to hide those. And lastly, we have the show channel notes and we've already taken a look at that. Now at the bottom of our channel list, we have a remote button. So this is useful for an instance, if you have an external controller, say it has eight faders or however many faders, let's just say it has four in this instance, we can activate the remote and then let's just apply that to the vocals and then we can deactivate the remote. So anytime that you wanna work with the faders on your external controller and you only want to see the channels that are tied to that external controller, you can click the remote and then only the channels that are tied to your external controller are going to show, and then you can manipulate those. Um, let's go ahead and show the rest of the channels, and I'll go ahead and deselect that. And then finally at the bottom here, we have 
an area for setting up scenes. So this is going to be useful for, say, we take our drums one through four. Let's hide the vocals and our VCA. And we only have our drums one through four. We can click the plus button. Let's call that drums. This is going to be our drum scene. I'll press enter to accept that. And then let's bring back our vocals, get rid of our drums. We'll click the plus button again. And let's call this Vox. I'll press enter to accept. And then now with this triangle, we can click on that and then choose the different scenes that we've set up. So if we want to only see our drums, we can choose that. We have drums one through four. If we would like to see our Vox, we can choose that. Now we have our four channels for the Vox. So that's how that works. And we have a lock. So this is going to, when that's selected, if we're working with our mix and we're making changes, this is going to be sure that we don't accidentally mess up the uh, scene that we've created here. So uh, if you want to be sure that you maintain the setup for the particular scene you're working with, be sure that you check the lock button. If you would like to remove the scenes, then just be sure the one you want to remove is active and click the minus button. And then that's taken out. If I click on the triangle, you can see that the Vox is gone. We can click the minus button. Now the drums is gone and we're back to as we started. Let's go ahead and bring back all of our channels. And the last little tidbit that we'll take a look at is I'll return back to the large view. If we add say uh, this auto filter and make some adjustments to the auto filter and we like how it sounds and we want to try it out or apply it to another channel, we can then just simply click hold and drag that auto filter and it's going to create a copy to that channel that we drag it to. Now it placed it on all four of these because they were all highlighted, uh, but that's if I drag this to vocal one, then we can see that it applies it to vocal one and the settings that we made are going to be applied to that. I'll go ahead and close that out and let's add another effect here just to show that we can click hold and drag to this other channel vocal four and place both of those at the same time when we click hold and drag on the inserts label there. So we can not only move these individually, but as a group by clicking, clicking and dragging on the inserts. Okay. So this has been a look at the features of the updated console within Studio One 4.